Hey, welcome back to the channel. So NaNoWriMo is coming up in a couple of days, and for those of you interested in participating, I just want to remind you that I do have a Scrivener document available that you can use for NaNoWriMo. It does track your word count by day, and uh, I do have it up on my blog at Drinking Cafe Latte at 1 p.m., and at some point I'll also have it on at my author site, but I haven't got that far. Uh, so for now, you can just get it from the blog. But I wanted to let you guys know, I have updated it for Scrivener 3. So those of you working on Scrivener 3, uh, it's ready to go. You just you know plug it in and, and get going. And for those of you who are still operating off of an old uh, 1.9 Windows, uh, that template is also still available. And it looks something like, uh, well, I closed it. But I'll show you how... Um, I'll show you an example of my last year's project so you can see what happens when you're finished. So but let me just give you a quick overview. Um, so if you do need to make some uh, adjustments, you can. Um, in fact, you might get it this way because I haven't actually uploaded it to my zip file yet. So you may need to make some adjustments accordingly. Um, but anyway, the way it works is you have uh, your how to use a project file. You can just read it to get a clear picture of what everything is. And then uh, once you're done reading, you can get going. Um, before NaNoWriMo actually begins, you may want to do some planning. So you have a section where you can do your planning. You just pick the uh, place where you want to do your review for just certain tips on how to get going on your work. And then uh, just you have a place for your own reminders. Um, you can give the story title here, the genre type. Uh, that's important to remember your genre because you want to stay on target with the type of work you're doing. If you don't have a genre defined, it may be tempting to go anywhere and everywhere. And that's fun, you know, fine if you're just having fun, but if you do plan on publishing at some point, um, then it's going to be better for you if you just get the genre ready to go. And then um, synopsis, if you need to make sure you know what your story is about ahead of time, which I would recommend, because uh, again, you don't want to wander aimlessly in the dark, uh, but the synopsis does give you that ability to check that. Story notes, uh, just anything you want to remind yourself before you get going, same thing with character notes, structure notes, and theme. And then the additional quick notes is just something that uh, is sort of like a follow-up to the other stuff, where maybe it's not so clearly defined by type, but you have other things to say. Uh, tracking elements would be the actual uh, section where you track what you've done that day. So if you're ambitious, uh, which I don't plan to be this year, uh, today or this year is going to be a much quieter year for me because I'm so swamped with everything else. I just, I'll be lucky to break 20,000 words this year, but I am going to at least commit something. Uh, so that's why I've went ahead and updated my uh, my. Uh, project file this year uh, but for those of you who are going to be aggressive with it this will come in really handy because hopefully you'll have something to chart every day um, really the goal here is you let yourself uh, know what you did that day have your target count um, there's a target counter also down here if you click on the little button you can set what your target should be uh, there's also an overview uh, which when we get to the each day uh, you'll see that each one has a pre prescribed target. Um, if you need to change it, you'll do that with the little target button down here, uh, which again, I will get to that to that in just a second. Uh, actual word count is what you actually did, so your our actual should be higher than your target. Um, and then total is going to be the sum of what your uh, what your progress is for the project as of that day, which you can always do that by checking the targets up here. I think it's the graph is what you need to press to see where you are for the day. You'll see that I already have three words in here. The three words is just the substitute. I'll show you that um, when I get there. Uh, but if you scroll down to the bottom, you see you have all 30 days accounted for. So it's really just a matter of filling it in and, and keeping yourself accountable to it. Uh, then after NaNoWriMo is any notes that you have um, for future progress, because most of us are not going to finish at 50,000. Most of us, or even on day 30, most of us will have more to write after the fact. So if you're wondering what's different from this draft to, um, or with this draft from uh, last year's draft, it's actually something I added during last year's um, project, and that's the continuation by scene. So I'm going to show you guys that in practice um, in a minute uh, when I go to my file from last year. But uh, novel by day is where you're going to do all the work. So you'll see that you have a section for all of your uh, progress. And then, of course, you can keep track of your synopsis over here if you want. Um, so when you click on day one, this is the filler word. Just get rid of that, and you'll be back to three. But if you want to set a new target, uh, you'll do it uh, down here, I believe. No. Um, well, it was in the target bin. I don't know why it went away. Um, it may be that you have to set it. You know what? Maybe you have to... 
Oh, no, I know what it is. If you just click on this, you can set the new target. Sorry. it's This is bars here because this, the target's already been set. If you see uh, um, the little bullseye, that means there's no target yet, so you have to make it. Um, I think in the old version it worked the same way. It's just, it was a different... Um, it's a little sharper, so it's easier to see. The window, uh, Scrivener 3, a little lighter on the fonts and the edges and things. So it's a bit harder to recognize these things. But yeah, you'll still, um, if you want to change your target to something else, uh, then you'll set it all here. The 166.7 is, or the 1667, that's what happens when you split it evenly down 30 days, the 50,000 word count. So um, I would suggest you know, factor in uh, the fact that November 1st is on a Monday this year. So you may want your like your day seven to be a lighter day because that's a, you know Sunday and who wants to work on Sunday? Um, Saturday may be the same. Or maybe you find that you work uh, the most productive on Saturdays, which tends to be the case with me if I actually sit down and do it, even though I've been trying to make Saturdays my off day uh, lately. So even Friday might be a busy day for me as far as um, progress goes. But if you have a, a, if you know your patterns is like maybe Mondays and Tuesdays, like mine, are just too busy to commit to more than 500 words a day, uh, you might set that. And then maybe Wednesday's a little easier on you, so you might do a thousand. Um, and then that would you know gradually you know put you into a more uh, power heavy you know weekend. So if you know that's your pattern, you can set your targets ahead of time to just account for that. So there's a number of ways to do it. And of course, I always say Thanksgiving should be the day where no one writes. Um, so whatever day of the week that falls on, I think, uh, what is that going to be? Thanksgiving this year is on the 25th. Uh, so day 25 might be a day for Americans to take a break. Who knows? Um, but anyway, that's just the way you can use this. And then the continuation uh, by scene is something that you'll use when you're finished. And so we'll actually go over to my old file now so you can see what that looks like. Uh, it's this one. So you may have already seen this if you watched my uh, videos from last year. Um, I think I showed this off. But essentially, you know, this is how everything looks in practice when you actually put all your works together. And actually, let me get rid of the uh, view here. Oops, no, that's not what I wanted. Um, there we go, that's what I want. So if you... Um, if you actually look at this uh, in practice, uh, this actually is the same. This is where I would actually write my structure notes. And if I want to break it down by scene, this is what I want to happen in my scenes as far as I can take it. And I, you know, for NaNoWriMo, I planned for as much as I thought I would get done during the 30-day period. So I did not write beyond the 30-day period. Uh, now, I would keep going just to uh, keep the file consistent, but uh, any notes extra that I have, I would put here. Uh, and this way, this, this particular series of notes is based on my uh, thoughts about integrating it with a series and how I would do that. So uh, this is also where I put in uh, story notes just to kind of keep myself in check for when I'm writing to make sure I don't uh, write anything stupid or um, improper. Um, up here is all my item notes. Uh, up here is my location notes. Here's my characters, uh, which I didn't, uh, yeah, up here. And then as I keep going up, you'll see that I have my general information. It's the title, the type of thriller I, I went off, of, or type of genre. I went off of the uh, Save the Cat version, which is a great book, by the way, if you guys haven't read it yet. I have a uh, video on um, my writer's bookshelf on Save the Cat. You should check it out. It's uh, episode 10, I believe, if you guys want to go look for it. Um, but, yeah, it's just this is where I put all that information so it really helps kind of keep me on track with what I want uh, tracking elements again this is uh, just what I did that day so here's an example of how I how I did that so like so day two uh, I really busted the uh, target by a lot and I had you know 8,000 words by the second day so I had a really good strong lead and this is something where I may have been impressed about it back then but you know even looking back now uh, I don't expect to pull that off this year because, again, I just got too much else going on. So I might do 4,000 by the end of day two, but I don't expect to have eight. Um, but we'll see. My first couple of days are usually pretty strong outings, so it could be wrong. Um, the journal entry, it also just, you know, it's my reminder to self what happened that day and, um, you know, just how I ended up uh, getting to the end there. And then I think this was the... Um, 
Oh, I might be thinking of the twenty of twenty nineteen. One one of the year I, I think by day one or two I was out uh getting chased by a squirrel. I think that was twenty nineteen. Anyway, uh you know, anything interesting that happens that day goes into my journal and when we get to the end I think I have is there a final okay, I don't have any final notes on day thirty. Uh but I do have for after NaNoWriMo, uh there's a section where I would uh write down what I want. So you'll see I kept mine pretty uh, simple for the summary because I had actually planned on continuing within the draft. So that brings you to continuation by scene. Uh, I don't have any notes here in the car, but when you get to my scene card, um, you'll notice I didn't really work on it much after NaNoWriMo, uh, just because, again, so much else. This is like happened right when I started building my website. So my website took over my life at that point. So I really got hardly any writing done, like all of 2021, unfortunately. But um, this is where I left off. Um, actually, that's not true. I worked on my Vela story, so ignore that. But anyway, this is where I left off with my story. Now, normally, this would be a lot longer, and I'd probably have multiple cards. Um, because once you get to this point, uh, you're done tracking. The, the new folder has a new count. So, you know, I, I believe. I um, actually have to make sure that's the case. Um, Um, sorry, give me one second. I think, yeah, 68. So actually, I believe continuation by scene does continue the word count. So, and I think that's the purpose is that once you hit your target 30 days, you can still keep track of how long your story is, even though you have no target set for the continuation. So that's how that works. But anyway, that's uh, my NaNoWriMo uh section you know there's of course the research section which you can use and this is just something there's nothing special about this you just do what you want with it um templates i don't think there's anything special in there no i never made anything for that but yeah uh that's the nanorimo uh template for scrivener now one thing i wanted to tell you guys going back to the 20 um what is this, this is paperweight yeah so for the scrivener 3 version um I haven't set this up. I haven't had a chance to really look into it. Um, but there, according to Scrivener's notes for the, the 3.1 release, there is an integration with the NaNoWriMo website, I believe. Um, I'm not sure how to do that. So this version will not have that integration, unfortunately. So I would recommend if you want the integration, what you can do is open up a new file um, that has the integration. And again, if I knew what that, how to, to access that, I would tell you guys, but I don't know. I haven't had a chance to explore it. But if you do find it and you decide you want to start a fresh, um, a fresh document, what I would recommend you do is just copy and paste all of these folders into your new draft. And I, I don't know if the targets will retain, so you may have to reset those. I, I'm not sure how that will work. But uh, just do be aware that Scrivener has announced that they uh, have integrated um, the ability to upload your word count into NaNoWriMo directly. So. Um, I highly recommend that if you can figure out how to do that, um, and I hope that by next year I'll have that implemented off of their new new document. But if yeah, if you have that ability, go ahead and, and use it because I just I think it's a really good useful feature to have. Um, and again, apologize I don't have that in this version. Um, I just for quite frankly don't know how to access that, um, and I and I'm running out of time to figure it out. So um, that's just what happens when you've given yourself too much work. But um, anyway, next year, hopefully, I'll have a version that counts for all of that. Um, last thing is I was planning and thinking of um, actually making each day its own folder and then having you able to um, write scenes out separately by cards. I've decided not to do that this time because I don't see any reason why you shouldn't just write it all in one file. Because that's what, if you go back to my uh, version here, that's what these pound signs are for. You know, pound signs or even just labeling scene numbers. Um, like you're giving yourself a clear idea of where the next scene should start just by giving it a name. The only reason why you might not want to do that is if you want to keep your card word count pure. In other words, if you don't want scene two to count towards your ultimate word count, then it would make sense to do it by folder. So I want to let you guys know it's really easy to do that. If you decide that you do want to do by folder, um, just by adding the folder um, within novel by day, uh, you'll keep your word count um, where it may again I'm not sure if um, I think any folder that you 
G1 or the draft banner is going to be counted towards your word count. So if you added a new, uh, if you wanted to do day one folder, day two folder, and just move these items into there, it's like that's perfectly fine. It's not going to change your word count, and I don't think it'll change your goal. Um, it, it might, you, I, you may have to do it by folder if that's possible. Um, that might be why I didn't actually do this. If you can do target by folder, then it would be worth it to do that. Uh, but if you can't, then uh, then you're better off just keeping the system that I have. So, anyway. All right, but anyway, that's it for now. Um, I do hope you guys do NaNoWriMo this year. Um, don't forget, too, that when you use Scrivener, you can do Windows. So if you want to see, for example, um, your, uh, your uh, dirty reminders while you're doing your day one, you just click on the little icon over here to split it. Then when just check to see what is highlighted right now. If you're on the left, this will highlight. If you're on the right, this will highlight. What I like to do is have the um, the notes on the right and then the document on the left. So if you click on day one while you're split, you'll open day one's document on this side while keeping your view uh, notes over here. So it's just a good way to kind of keep up with everything and not lose track. And um, you know. I think it works. So, anyway, that's Scrivener uh, NaNoWriMo. Again, it'll be um, available on my website, uh, Drinking Cavi Latte. It is not yet available on my author site. It will be eventually, but by the time that happens, it'll probably be past NaNoWriMo. So, but don't worry, I'll do another video next year. Um, I do one of these every year. So, um, I'll let you know what's new you know, next October. Um, so, just for now, you can take it off of my old original site and uh, but Scrivener uh, 1.9 and Scrivener 3 will both be on there. So pick whichever one you'd rather use. So anyway, that's it for today. Hope you all are well, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Hey, guys, actually, just a quick addendum. Um, right after I finished recording the video, I went back and looked through my documents, and I wanted to officially update the Scrivener file for 2021. And as I did so, I did add in um, a label for continuing by scene in the um, – in the how to use this uh, section but I also added some tagging and labeling features so this is also a good thing for those who want to look at what they've uh, worked on at a glance now this is going to be uh, the case for both the um, old Scrivener 1.9 and Scrivener 3 if you're using it which uh, you'll see over here uh, I've updated both documents um, and then of course bear in mind labels and statuses are down here in 3 and then they're over up here in one so basically what I've added if you go to let's say day one uh, I've got actually well sorry let's go back to the, the how-to um, I've added the various export tags and I've added target uh, labels or statuses and so for the the stat um, the export labels I'm trying to remember which is which these are the color codes for your push pins so like if you are say in the folder view these push pins will change color depending on status so like if I click on the um, bar here let's or if I go to day one and change the label let's say to in development status uh, needs target uh, target unset then if I go to the folder you'll see day one target unset so what this will do is this will actually give you an overview of whether or not your progress actually worked out well. So um, that's what I added uh, after I recorded the uh, footage for earlier. So that is in here now, and it's actually in both versions. The Scrivener 3, it's the labeling might be a little too light, so um, I don't want to set that for you because I don't know what your uh, process is for wanting to see labels. Um, so you know, I'll give that to you to uh, figure out but uh, just a quick overview of what each uh, label is so uh, the colored pins are for in development needs exporting exported won't export needs partial and then partially exported so the color coded blue is for in development that's just anything that's not uh, worked on yet so that would be for most of the days when you first get this. Now I've not actually set this for you because I don't know what your process will be and I don't want to infringe on that. So what I would recommend you do is if you download this uh, Scrivener file, uh, go ahead and set them according to what you want. Um, if you don't care about any of this stuff, then just leave them blank. I Again, that's not something I typically use. That's why I've never done it before. I just thought that it might be useful for some people. 
Uh, but if you are um, the kind of person who really wants to see uh, from an overview of where you are on each project, then these labels will hopefully help you. So um, and development is blue. Uh, ideally, when you first get the file, you would mark them all blue. We're all in the development because nothing's been done yet. And then uh, needs exporting is for anything that you've finished, but you haven't put into your official uh, novel file. So this, um, the Scrivener docu, or sorry, the, the basic template for NaNoWriMo assumes that you're going to eventually port this over to a new project file that's designed with chapters and scenes in mind and revisions and all of that. The NaNoWriMo uh, template is really just there for you to write something each day just to keep track of your word count. It's strictly rough draft uh, and um, like there's no backtracking intended for this. Like once it's on paper, it's on paper, go back and fix it in another file. That's sort of the, the goal of this particular project file uh, because you don't want to corrupt your word count. That's So these labels are in place in order to remind you when you need to move your uh, that particular day's work uh, so what I do is I write the whole thing and then I go back and deal with it another time so the needs exporting is there for those uh, sections or scenes where you have you know everything you have you want to uh, use but you haven't officially put it into the new file exported which is green so I that's set up like a traffic light green is basically saying it's done it's already in the new file uh, I'll deal with it in the other uh, file well, an export is anything that's red. It's anything where you've decided that nothing that you wrote that day is worth salvaging. You know, it's sort of like the nuclear method. Um, it's going to always stay on this file only and not, um, not ever carry over. Um, most of your work hopefully will never get this tag. The only other thing that you might label this for is any day where nothing was written. Obviously, if, if it's in a blank file, why would you export it? So you can also mark one export. Um, for that, um, or if you wanted to, you could also add a, a new uh, label for uh, empty. It's up to you. Um, needs partial exporting. This is where you're happy with uh, some of the work, but not all of it. So maybe you split a scene, and maybe half the scene is worth transferring, the other half isn't. Uh, so this just lets you know that when you export, it's not going to be all of it. You're going to have to actually take a look and see what the salvageable items are. And then partially exported is when you've actually made the, the, the export of the partial thing you want, which means you don't need to go back into the file um, unless you really want to, to see if there's anything left that you can salvage. Uh, you'll notice that the partial export uh, are in the lighter versions of the, um, of the actual exports. So keep that in mind. Um, if you need to change any of these colors, it's real easy to do. You just, when you're in the label section, you can just click on, uh, click on the label. I think you have to go to edit, and then you can click on the color and change it. So that's gonna be true of this and in Scrivener three. All right, and if you want to add new labels or new, um, new statuses, you do so with the plus and minus tags again, but in both versions. Um, now, as far as your statuses go, this is for, uh, again, this is the banners uh, that show you whether or not you met your target. So I want you to remember that I've already set each doc or each day as 1667, since that's what evenly uh, splits uh, through 50,000 words. That is not considered uh, official or, or approved. So for you to, re to say that your target is set, you actually want to either approve 16067 or, um, or, or change it to whatever you want. Okay, otherwise, mark it as unset. So by default, I would recommend when you first get the file, if you're going to use the system, label each day as in development and target unset. And then you can change them as you go. Uh, that would be my recommendation. Again, I'm not doing it for you because I don't want to impede on your system. Uh, but that's what I would say. Um, and then, of course, once you set your target, you know, mark it with sort of target set. And then what you're going to do is, uh, as each day comes and goes, you're either going to say you've reached your target or you missed it. Um, and then if you not only reached it but exceeded by double or more than a 1,000 words, um, I would say, like, if your target was a 1,000, then, um, or if you're for less than a 1,000, I would say at least hit, hit your, or pass your target by 1,000. So, like, if I have one of my 500-word days, and I end up writing 1,500 words, then I would say target obliterated. 
um, or if you have a 3,000 word day and you hit 6,000 words and that's also target obliterated. So that would be my recommendation for that. But you can set whatever your criteria is um, and you can even update this uh, document to um, to whatever your own personal criteria is. Target embarrassed goes the other direction. It's if you um, met less than half your target or you fell short by more than a thousand words. Um, so that's just showing that, you know, I had a, whatever my plans were that day, they did not get met. <laughs> so then we uh, target unset again would be the default if you actually use this. Target zero is basically for days where you don't do any work. Again, like Thanksgiving would be my target zero. I don't ever work on Thanksgiving. That's like my day to enjoy other things. So um, I would expect day 25 for 2021 to be a target zero day for me. So there's nothing wrong with target zero that just shows that you didn't do anything. And that may assume that you didn't um, set a target either. So I would say for days where you plan to do no work, have a target zero and uh, won't export. So that would be fine. But anyway, that's the uh, labeling system. Again, both Scrivener uh, Old and Scrivener 3 both have it. Um, so that's how you use it if you want it. And uh, it just I thought it was a nice quality of life uh, addition that um, you might appreciate if you're into that kind of thing. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there. I, um, I ended the video without actually having done this. So that's why I'm tacking this on. That's why everything's kind of out of whack here. But um, anyway, that's what's going on. So um, just once again, thanks for watching. Um, I probably will tag the other stuff later. So anyway, that's it. Thanks.